This video is part of our program to promote designers and publishers from Aotearoa, New Zealand. Kia ora koutou and welcome to Floating Floors in about three minutes. Prototype copy used, not a paid preview. It has no solo mode. It's a game for two to four players, playing time is short, and it's a pretty simple game. Your Banson seals containing the secrets of your ninja clan have been stolen. Can you reclaim all your seals before the other ninjas collect theirs? The trick is that the seals are located in a treacherous area. Can you master your acrobatic skills to dive and leap across the floating floors? The game ends once a player has moved around the board and collected all of their Banson seals. For two players, this is four seals. You claim Banson seals by moving your meeple adjacent to them. Dexterity. Moving your pieces requires you to carefully balance on the floating floors. Dice. Each turn you'll roll dice and can manipulate pieces based on that roll. Push your luck. You can take risky moves to try to win quicker. Player turn. When you set up the game, each player will have a start position, where their player meeple is placed, and their bants and seals randomly placed at other alcoves around the board. The goal of the game is to claim your bants and seals by moving your meeple across the floating floors. Once you claim a bants and seal, you must rotate the floor 90 degrees. If at any point in your turn you drop a piece or cause a floor to fall over, your turn ends, and the other player resets the board to their advantage. On your turn you will first roll the three dice. These represent the markers you can claim this turn. We take the two white cube markers from the general supply, but there is a black triangle blocking our path, so we claim that one from the board. You can then do the following actions in any order. Place markers on the board. Here we want to go up. So we place the two white markers underneath the floor to make it more stable. We can't place in any of the water spaces. We also place the black marker on top for even more stability. We then move our marker one space at a time, ensuring that every step does not cause the meeple to fall over or a floor to collapse. If we are by a Banson seal, we claim it and then rotate the floor 90 degrees. Banson seals can be later expended to rotate a floor 90 degrees as well, accelerating the end game. You can increase the challenge of a game by adding water tiles, which have only one possible bottom support location. Keep playing until one player claims all their Banson seals. Why would you like this game? Floating Floors is first and foremost a dexterity game, and one that will require an incredibly steady hand. But unlike a lot of dexterity games, this one rewards forward planning as well. Plotting out the best path to claim all your seals while throwing roadblocks in the face of your opponent is the cornerstone of this game. That and its push your luck elements. If you're really confident in your abilities, you can move around the board a lot faster. All up, this is a game for people who like dexterity games but want a little bit more strategy than normal. The best thing about this game is the tension between playing safe and moving fast. However, this is a demo version and I hope the final looks a lot nicer. And I think it's best suited to two players. Four people around anything other than the most sturdy of tables is a recipe for disaster. For another excellent dexterity game, try Junk Art. And for a different take on sneaking around, try Sabotage. Floating Floors. It's way more tricky than I made it look. 3 Minute Board Games does not do paid content. Keep us independent by supporting us on Patreon. And if you enjoyed this video, hit the notification button, like, share, and subscribe to the channel.